video. She comes with us, she can't lose. Worst idea ever. Next stop, Chicago. Stop the graphic chemical for a bit. Morksylvania, USA. What do we know about Pennsylvania? Well, that Morks family is quite the tree. Full grown adults living in a minivan. And Wait, how did you come from that way? Okay. Thank you. All right. We're so close to him. I can smell him all over. New York City, <laughs> just dripping on the windshield. Hello, Mike Houston. This is Nomas. It's almost, you know, time for us to meet. Why is it okay to park there? Hey, um, this is Matt or La uh, Lars and Nomas. Um, we're outside, I think. So you guys are on a mission to visit a bunch of wicked people. It's about that time, late nineties. Yeah, you know, for the for these prints, we decided a long time ago. Let's try one thing. Let's do 18 by 24 black and white prints, sell them for 20 bucks a pop, and see how far that takes us. Like, yeah. it's entertained us for 12, 13 <laughs> years. Pull <laughs> right. together whatever resources you have. Some <laughs> coercion, <laughs> some borrowing, <laughs> some looting. Yeah. And you kind of widen your circle. Yeah. Try to err on the side of cooperation rather than competition. Even though this is New York, <laughs> it's sort of a rising tide for its own. I don't know, that's how I understand it. Our little shit some light on human nature. There's that type of mark you can make with the wood cut. It's pretty hard to emulate with anything else. Just the fact you're cutting with a knife. What kind of people are in the Seminoles? Affordable print scene. Mm -hmm. uh, we brought them all together to sort of show New York as much as we can, you know, if anybody cares. Like, yeah. Hey, there's a whole different movement making going on other than the precious art object movement. Yeah. I don't know. It's been fun. Yeah. It's not like it's just, it's just me. Like, yeah. There's him and our studio and all the people we work with and want to work with. It's like, you know, the momentum of that whole thing is a little bigger than me. Yeah. So that kind of carries you around. The problem I have is in the book arts world, what the fuck are printing? <laughs> I'm just projecting some life into it, like we do. Is, I think that's important as well. It's a quarter to wolf bat, so we might be, uh, you know, heading down there pretty soon. I think we're outside. It's a constant hustle. Yeah. It's like you gotta hit the door running every day. I started to meet, like you said, like-minded people and just surround myself with those people. So just making prints, just having fun with it, not being too academic with it, not yeah. not taking it too serious, just like having fun and making images and not to carry that pretentious attitude that art school <laughs> instills in you. Yeah, instills in you because a lot of those people that are instilling that in you, they don't actually have a studio practice, so they have no fucking idea <laughs> what it takes to keep this stuff going. To show your work wherever you can show it. If it's a fucking coffee shop or whatever, or if it's a friend's apartment where you can have like a one night salon style show or whatever. Because you never know who's gonna see it and what that's gonna turn into. So yeah, just put in the time. Totally, the parameters open, right? So and it's the, happening. But the permits never work out. Yeah, they just do it. Yeah. You can't get that mark in the other way. Because it's you have to exert energy just to make it. Then I don't want to set boundaries for myself. So, but we'll use it for something. Who gets to say they built like 24 foot Viking ships? <laughs> work Vikings. Yeah, yeah. Vikings. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just like. <laughs> just got out of hanging out with the uh, the Dennis McNett and his crew. We forgot to ask him where to eat. I'm gonna starve. We got like half an hour. Who's next after that? Drive by, drive by press. Uh, we do a lot of other stuff too. I mean, I don't know what you guys know about drive by press. This tool to reach people, you know, mass distribution. And we wanted to share it with people. We can pay visiting artists who have degrees and you don't have anything yet except this enthusiasm. You got out of school, it, those just influences disappear. You're only surrounded by the influences you surround yourself with. 
everybody kind of knows everybody. So if you hang out in this world long enough, uh, you, you know, you run into these folks and you right. see their work, they see yours. They don't teach you that <laughs> in art school. <laughs> um, you have to teach yourself that stuff. They expected us to be able to turn out like 250 shirts a night. Yeah. Um, and print that in four hours. And in art school, that's like unheard of. Being a professional is something that you kind of evolve into as the experience of beating the pavement and doing it every day despite circumstances. I found that the opportunity looks like hard work and is, but it's rewarding. I know something about traveling from distance to see some prints. I wish when I was in school I'd taken business classes, learned the school of hard knocks about all that shit. <laughs> yeah, what it's like to get fucked, what a good deal looks like. Take oh, yeah. everything you're showing them and, and rip you off. They have the resources to do it. How do you stop ripping outfitters from taking everything you have? My philosophy coming out of grad school, what the fuck am I going to teach anybody? <laughs> I'm not going to have anything new to add to that situation. Everything's great in this safe little crack in the world. And when you get out there, it's the real world, and it's bright, and it's ugly, <laughs> and people don't care. When they got out, they were kind of like, well, now what? And they kind of expected their professors or the people that have been holding their hands their whole lives to, you know, take them the rest of the way, and that's just not how it works. When you're done with art school, you're done. A lot of kids took advantage of it. Um, some didn't. It's part of developing your professional practice is, like, getting your ass out of bed and going up to the studio. We live in this fucked up world where you're taught your whole life that you're in control of your own success, you know what I mean? It's your, if you're in control of it, you can do, you can be whatever you want. And the sad truth is you can't be whatever you want. You're not necessarily 100% in control of your success. Trying to turn a buck to pay rent and like trying to meet somebody who gave a shit and like saw some potential in what I was doing. It was me being in the right place at the right time, but it was also luck that I met the people that I met. I wasn't necessarily in control of that. So you just have to take what's dealt and make the best of the situation that's in front of you. Here's a woodcut. How economically driven the art world is. And no one in school wants to believe that. There's nothing wrong with that. Great art comes out of that. Andy Warhol's ideas wouldn't have meant anything had capitalism not existed. <laughs> Greg Nanny from the Drive by Press. What a treat. Our hope and spirits are high. Hey Brooklyn, we're leaving. For Can't be dirty when you're this clean. <laughs> Fuck art. We had to wake up liars. He was uh he was asleep in the canopy. Oh, looking out for your best interests. Strong, strong stench of that Bill Fick. Godfather Bill Fick. Godfather, he's close. It's just like this huge network, which is great, because you don't have to let the painters, you know, they're all lonely people. <laughs> Printmakers, you know, we like to hang out. And so I understand it, uh, it's Patrick called it this outlaw printmaker thing, so I don't know if that's true or not. They've changed the game. And, but again, it gets all back to sort of the community thing, you know. I mean, the thing is, there's no rules. You know, collaboratives tend to be more party-like. You know, <laughs> people having fun. And stuff. The relief prints seem to be where I could, you know, really kind of do my own thing and explore the way I want to go with it. It felt the most natural to me. And the hunger, I just, I think it's like with all of us, we're just pretty possessed by it. I mean, everyone you've visited with so far, like, are just crazy workers. I mean, we're all possessed by making this stuff. You know, the best way to try to good at this is just to make a lot of it. You know, don't go to art school, just make art. <laughs> we all get dirty, you know, I think we're all kind of dirty mm -hmm. in our own way. You know, just imagery mm -hmm. that has a lot of impact. Art has to, you know, inject itself into this culture that's so, like, fast-paced. and Putting it out there and let people deal with deal with the way they want. Most of us sell our work for pretty cheap. There is this democratic idea. Dennis the same way. It's not so precious, I think. For me, it's more about getting the image out there. I just live on, live on nothing. And I just worked on my work. You know, just trying to stir things up, trying to get things going, you know, what, what could happen. We sweated it out for 100 degrees. Durham, North Carolina. Dry eyes, no tears. <laughs> We're in the South. Derek Riley, the catacombs. He, he broke into the University of Kentucky. Yep, we broke into the University of Kentucky. Not very difficult. Anytime you go Hear somebody's website is DerekRiley.com. You just expect to see like watercolors and buffalo, yeah, like, yeah, butterflies yeah. and buffaloes, you know. And he said when he got here, he was like, dude, those emails were so fucked up. Like I had to come here <laughs> yeah. to see what was going on. He carved like half of anatomy of a crack shack the week he was here up in my studio, just like nonstop. So I came back at seven and we started printing. I ended up being up for 48 hours. Printing his thing while he was <laughs> printing, asleep. Printing his thing while he was asleep. <laughs> and uh, I mean, my, my whole journey into fine arts is kind of depressing, I guess. Still don't really know what I want to do. So then I went to grad school. You know, can you imagine having 30 years of your life planned out? 
especially like a printmaker. I don't yeah. think they really know what goes into it. So they, it depends on what you want to do with it. Right. You know, if you if you have any interest in, in being in academia, mm -hmm. which depending on where you're at can be really nice yeah. or really bad. Yeah. So it, it has it has its perks. Yeah. And you you do you do like focus more on your art mm -hmm. than I mean as long as you're self motivated. Then that's something you can do on your own. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just as much show as it is functionality. Space, yeah. yeah and it, seems, it seems like the people that you that you're going to visit are people who are comfortable selling their work for like nothing. Yeah. For somebody that likes it, you know. Sure. He's he is he's a lot of fun though. Yeah. Have you ever met him? Yeah. yeah he's a lot of fun. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll see you in Wisconsin. Max has to poop. It's about to get real, real deep. We are here outside of the aisle of printing. I mean, this, it's not to say that like doing like, high art or gallery art is like the wrong way to go, but I think I just always wanted to like be inclusive and bring more people into it. I think I think there's always going to be a place for handmade things. You don't have to start from where we started because yeah, right. you pushed the ball forward, so now you're going to take that. Now, now you don't have to like fight for the right to be there. Yeah. All these people that you're visiting yeah. are a little bit irreverent. The outlaw of Frenchers, yeah. right? So, yeah, I don't know. Look, Frenchers were built. Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. Just not. I hate trains. We're not supposed to see Tom Huck today. We're not supposed to see Tom Huck. Missouri. No mas, no mas, we must get to Tom Huck. No mas, no mas, we must get to Tom Huck. I spent most of the drive at 90 to 100 miles an hour. Well, I'm, I'm no mas, and this is layers. Hey, you know what, man? You know what, I'm gonna, I just, I have a really bad attitude about that whole academia yeah. thing. I, they use the school facilities, they use the school supplies, and it's not, that's not being a pro, man. I always was under the naive notion that if you're a, you're a working artist, you're gonna be a better teacher at it. <laughs> Duh! My heart does not believe to those people at all. <laughs> yeah. Which is something that they never teach you about in school. <laughs> How to establish a collector base. Because first of all, it's impossible to do. And the other thing is the people that are teaching you don't have one. I guess the last thing I'll say about the academia thing, is I, I could go on and on and on for days about that shit. Yeah. I would be totally happy with academia print programs or art schools in general, if they would just admit what they really are. They're not training uh, art, young artists. They're training, if they would just admit this, they're training really astute and informed museum goers. <laughs> if they would just admit that, that that's really what they're doing, I'd be totally happy with them. But they never will, because that doesn't make themselves feel better. They want to wake up in the morning and look at themselves and say, I'm an artist. That's what I do. No, man. Tom Hook Academia is for the birds. You know, okay, well, I guess I'm going to be poor for the rest of my life. But have a name. Renown and money do not go in hand in hand. hand, in hand. Because the more renowned you get, the more stuff you want to make and the more expensive that is. A little bit at a time, and then 15, 16 years later, you wake up, you have a finished shop. <laughs> well, I try to make it fun yeah. by getting strippers in to advertise my classes. I try to make it an extension of my personality. And one of the things, I make absolutely no apologies at all. This is nowhere still in terms of the art world, okay? So you have to scream louder than everybody else. I'll say it right now, the more of my group of guys, my friends that lead teaching, I think the better it is. So you're done. Yep. You have, you've seen everybody. What have you been eating? A bunch of hell raisin and hard drinking, you know, guys that did prints that hung out together. It's doing your own thing and your life is about your work. You're gonna do what you wanna do. You know, you're gonna have to earn your own living like everybody else in the world. You know, day to day, for the work, for the art, for printmaking, that's what it's about. And they, you know, stirred it up with their work and that's what we're sort of about. He, he influenced all of us. 
it just so happened that he ended up influencing about six or seven really loud mouths. Yeah. <laughs> That's a that are big, that really are like, ah! And then there's a whole different movement making going on. Not uh, taking it too serious, just like having fun. And we wanted to share it with people. You know, just trying to stir things up. He's, he is, he's a lot of fun though. Yeah. He's a lot of fun and it, it's changed everything. I'm pretty proud of that actually. About everything, that's why we got this money. Right here, this is what it's all about. Money to help quick to win. Trip synopsis. Old people don't like punk rock. <laughs>